Now let's continue our tour of the GUI again from here down to the bottom line. Now, this little padlock here is similar to that on a lot of IK multimedia plugins and is just the authorization details. So hitting that, it shows our serial number, digital ID and authorization code for the computer. And that's just to make sure that we're all authorized and everything looks fine from that side. The info screen here brings up a hip looking back of the rack kind of look and it's all nice, but all that's really telling us is our current version number, which in this case is 1.1.2, the latest version, and the build number there in brackets. And the rest of this is just pretty. Click anywhere to get out of there. And a preference box. Now this one does require a bit of explanation. So the two preferences here, remember last plugin settings for new instances, um, I pretty much can test doesn't work because at the moment it's checked, so let's just save that setting and to prove our point. Now, just looking at the plugin at the moment, it's set with NS10 showing and say base correction is on and the plugin is on. Now, if I open another instance of the plugin up here, you would presume those same settings would be preserved according to that preference. But nope, a new version opens up with my default Dynaudio speakers there. So to make it even more confusing, I mean, let's... Let's take that out altogether. Let's open this version again. Let's turn it off from there. Let's turn the full range base correction off. So we've got NS10's base correction off and the plugin itself off. So presumably that's being remembered. And if I go up here and bring it down again, we get Dynaudio speakers base correction on and the plugin on. So it doesn't appear to be remembering that at all. So I'm a little confused as to how that's supposed to work. My only other suggestion would be if we remove this altogether. So that's our last version with the NS10's base off, plug in off, and I'll remove it altogether. So now when I reinstantiate the same plugin, I would expect those settings to be remembered, but no, we're back to this Dynaudio thing. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there um, unless I'm misinterpreting the function. Anyway, more importantly is this second preference here, enable speaker delay trimming. Now I must admit when I first got hold of this plugin, that caused me a little bit of a problem and I'll explain why. I did my first measurement and I was very excited to sit down and hear the results on these Dynaudio speakers. This particular option was checked and the results I were getting were really quite bad. I was hearing horrible phasing and smearing of the image and I was a bit concerned because this is supposed to be improving things and it was really messing up the phase of the signal. And I got in touch with IK Multimedia and what was explained to me is that there must have been something odd with my measurement phase and the guys were absolutely right because I actually had the right hand channel of my left and right setup louder than the left hand channel. And I think I've done that because of, I mentioned the screen that's attached to the icon here which I think was blurring my image a little bit. So I think I had the right channel a little bit louder just to compensate for things that I was hearing. Now, the measurement microphone detected this and that kind of threw things into disarray because what this feature is supposed to do is correct situations where the left and right distinction is out by quite a lot. And in my case, it was out by just a little bit. So seemingly what's happened is the microphone and software thought that my first position placement, number one, was not in the middle. Now, visually, as far as I'm concerned, it was in the middle, but because the right-hand speaker was louder than the left-hand speaker, the software decided it needed to compensate for that. And truth be known, if I unchecked this option, it was perfect. And all it was doing was removing that left-right trim part of the equation. All the rest of the corrections that the software does were still intact. So this is just to do with left and right timing and nothing else. Everything else that Arc does was still working. I also checked a few forums online and I think a few other people had the same problem and a few of them were recommending just to ignore this and keep it turned off all the time. But in more tragic situations where things are actually quite wrong, I'm sure this feature could actually prove beneficial by time aligning the left and right and getting things back on track again. So just a warning, only use it if it's really necessary and have a good hard listen. If it doesn't improve things, turn it off. And I've had it turned off ever since and everything's been great. So at this point, we've pretty much covered all the features in Arc, but watch my next video for a little trick on how to use it more effectively in a mixed setting. See you then.